Hey y'all. Uh, it's July the 23rd, 2015, and I had to make this video as something of an update on the Sandra Bland situation because I received more information as I was expecting. Of course, cases like these are never clear cut. It's always going to be more information uh, to be had, and that's why, you know, trial by jury, like I insinuated in the first video, is of utmost importance. I mean, gathering every bit of evidence that you can and getting to the bottom of it. Now, as we all know, a jury of our peers really isn't uh, something that can be had in America, but we can come close. We can uh, get 12 reasonable people together to really, really look at the evidence and find out who's guilty. Now, um, I'm still as emotionally driven by this case as I was in the previous video. However, things have uh, come to light uh, and we need to consider this. All right, I still think someone, and the thing is, I mean, in my heart of hearts, I really don't believe in jails, especially the way that they're uh, orchestrated here in America. But somebody still needs to go to jail. If we're going to have jails, somebody needs to go to jail over this goddamn shit. All right? I want to be adamant, but we're going to start to figure out who is this somebody. I also want to, before we go on, uh, a lot of what I said was about the arresting officer. And I want to make it clear that I'm not dumb. I know that the arresting officer was not, more than likely, not going to be in the situation of her death in the case that she was murdered. Because it's not the officers who um, are, are keeping people in the jail. That's a whole different set of people, obviously. But anyways, let me, let me just start from the beginning, all right? Um, you're going to notice in the video uh, that I left it. Well, actually, I'm leaving a couple links. I'm leaving the one to Tommy Sotomayor's video, which got me thinking a lot differently. He's pointed out a, a lot of aspects that I hadn't yet considered. And so um, this video is largely inspired by Tommy Sotomayor's video, which I left a link down to the bottom. But if you, you can search any video. Of this incident, uh, you're gonna notice that um, she does explain that the cop pulls up right, right behind her, tailgates her, and it has her feeling nervous. That's why she pulled to the side without using a blinker. She just got nervous and moved to the side. Now this happens, all right. We need to establish that this happens, and this is probably not a good idea for as protocol for police officers because we know that you have the technology to get the license plate number like that from a machine. We already understand that. So the idea of you tailgating people is and has always been extremely dangerous. It is going to make people nervous. It is unnecessary. We need to start thinking about this. All right, so this is how the, the situation began. Now, uh, once you see Tommy Sotomayor's video, you might have already seen it and came back, or you might be seeing it later. You're going to understand that both parties were incorrect in this. Now, the, the officer could have been more respectful. He could have been more cordial in this matter, it, especially if he was only planning to give her a warning. All right? But at the same time, uh, you put me in this Sandra Bland situation, and I know the first one was, uh, the first video is titled, We Are All Sandra Bland, but technically speaking, no, we, are, we aren't we are Sandra Bland because if you put me in that situation, in the same exact situation, you're going to you're gonna see someone on camera acting a lot more cordially uh, and speaking a whole lot less. And I'm just being honest, honest to God, this is the truth. He would have came up to me and been like, oh, you know, uh, for example, how are you doing? I'd be like, okay. I'm okay. Well, uh, can I see your license registration? Yes. And, and, you know, he wouldn't have had to tell me to put out a cigarette because as soon as I got pulled over, had I been smoking cigarettes, which I don't, I, as soon as I got pulled over, that cigarette would have been out, period. All right? And I'm not saying you're guilty for having a cigarette. There's obviously not a law against having cigarettes, but I'm telling you right now, 
that cigarette would have gone out immediately had I seen myself being pulled over, all right? Um, and you would have not gotten hardly any lip out of me. There would have been yes sirs. There would have been hardly any speaking out of me to where the point of that you would have seen a video and it would have led up to me being beaten on the side of the street. It doesn't matter if you were black, white, Hispanic, Asian, uh, Native American, Eskimo. It really doesn't matter. You would see you would see a man completely complying to the utmost extent, saying hardly anything, and everything he was saying would be completely com com polite. And you would see him getting beat on the side of the road. Everybody would be outraged. There would be no nobody would have any mixed mixed feelings on, on the subject. That's what you would have seen. But instead, what you saw was a lady, and she was kind of getting out of hand. As, uh, uh, whatever you would call them, uh, black ladies are known to do. They're just known to do this. And it's not me being racist. I'm, I shouldn't even have to say I'm being racist. This is what they're known to do. A lot. Alright. She, she should not have gotten beaten on the side of the road for any reason. But it, if it was me in her situation, it would have looked preposterous. All right, and somewhere, somewhere, Jonathan Gentry, I'm sure, is sitting down somewhere and looking at this footage saying, I told these motherfuckers, I told them, I told them, I told them, all right, I told them. That's what Jonathan Gentry is saying right now. And come to find out that this lady is actually part of the Black Lives Matters movement to some capacity, and I'm not sure what, how, what capacity. The thing is, obviously... On its face, that is a silly movement. It 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 doesn't hold water. It's stupid. All right, that doesn't mean you need to be beat on the side of the road. All right, but you you can see where this lady's coming from. That's kind of dumb. Now, when I was seeing the video, and I didn't mention this in my first video, I had no choice but to think, you know, uh, okay. So what it seems like is they murdered her in her cell. All right, because I didn't know that she had suicidal tendencies, which she did claim to have suicidal tendencies on her Facebook. I was not familiar with her Facebook. All right, but I, I said to myself, you know, gosh, it would have been extremely hard. And notice that she got, she died three days after incarceration. She, uh, it would have been extremely hard to murder this lady, uh, knowing that her family was out in the waiting room or out in the lobby and just, just trying desperately to get her out. Uh, it would have been extremely hard to do this. In fact, it, it just wouldn't have... Ha if we're hypothetically saying that she got murdered, just, that wouldn't be a good aspect of it. She wouldn't be a good prospect to murder at that point. Because you got to know that right after you murder her, people are going to raise hell. Because they were right there. They were not even a couple hundred yards away. All right. It turns out that that's not the case. Nobody was there waiting for her on her behalf. Nobody in her family, all right? And not only that, from what I understand, uh, from what I'm seeing in Tommy Sotomayor's video, is that she reached out to her family, uh, a couple of people in her family, to get bonded out, which she should have been immediately, all right? And that's what that's what raised an alarm in my, in my mind, is that it had been three days and she had not gotten bonded out by her family and stuff. What's going on here? How much money could that really have costed? But it turns out she did reach out to her family and uh, to no avail. And that's despicable, right? You, if you have a lady in your family and you leave her in jail for three days, either she really, really deserved it or your family's despicable. There's really no three ways about it. All right, so that that coming together, the, those bits of evidence um, imply that there's a lot more to this story. We really need to get to the bottom of this. Someone really still needs to go to jail, but I'm not sure who yet at this point. I mean, it's very interesting, but here's, here's the thing about it, and that's where I'm going to get into other things. Um, you know, in the clip with Thomas Sotomayor's video, you're going to see on the local news that the lady... Who, who's a black lady, she, um, she mentions even before you ever see Sandra's face 
that a black lady was in jail and then she had got murdered or whatever. Now, we're going to see Sandra's face. Everybody who's not blind is going to see her face. So you never had to mention that she was a black lady. That was um, inappropriate. It was unnecessary. All you had to say was, a lady in jail today, she got murdered and stuff. Uh, and let's go to the footage. You'll see exactly what she looks like and, and whatever else and how she was acting. Um, no, she had to mention there was a black lady. And I've seen videos, you know, I want to see people's opinions on a subject. And they're already talking about, man, I can't believe these white police keep doing this and stuff. We need to start getting together and handling our business and stuff. So like, but I saw a particular video where the guy, he was so upset, he said, I didn't even look at the footage because I was so upset by this. I thought, man, if I look at that footage, I'm going to go out and start handling business. And uh, I, I might leave a link. In fact, I probably will leave a link to this video. I'm sorry. But um, the thing is, you know, you have no right to do anything if you never even have the guts to see the footage, for one. Number two, uh, according to Tommy Sotomayor, and we have to look in farther than this, um, the officer in question, the arresting officer, was not even white. And yes, there is going to be a big stink about how he was white, and I was this white cop on black person violence all the time. Um, and the thing is, he's not white, and I had to say something to everybody who might not be familiar with uh, South Texas or Central Texas is chances are a lot of the people that you see who are white, uh, including officers, you're going to see them and you're going to say, oh, that's a white person. And chances are they're not even white, man. A lot of the times they're Hispanic. We live in Southern Central Texas. A lot of us are mixed up. You're going to look at me and say, oh, this is a white guy talking. Yeah, my skin is white. I'm half Hispanic. It really is nobody's business. But the thing is, uh, that's what's going to happen. And like Tommy Sotomayor said, there was no one who was really full white uh, in the jail, uh, guarding the jail. And the lady who assisted the Hispanic officer, she in fact was a black person. Like none of this has anything to do with race. And yet race is what's going to be drummed up. Now, before my 15 minutes is up, I just would like to reiterate, race is going to be what's drummed up. All right, this family has, it's seeming that they have something to do in being guilty in this situation. We need to look harder at them. But race is what's going to be drummed up here. Now, uh, before I finish up this video, I had a conversation on Facebook uh, just yesterday in which I said, Bernie Sanders, there's no way in hell. First of all, our elections are a fraud. They're an illusion. Uh, you're naive for really even thinking that they're not. But hypothetically, if that wasn't, Bernie Sanders, there's no way in hell that he would ever get elected. Now, and then I put out who I thought was probably going to get elected. It's going to be an, an order of more likeliness is Obama, Hillary Clinton, and then Donald Trump. And I said, either way, either one of these three is going to be a complete, total, goddamn nightmare, all right? Um, and then someone, someone mouthed off and they were like, oh, I didn't know Obama was running again. All right? I had to tell him, you know what? Obama's not freaking running again, obviously. That would be obvious. If he started running again, everybody would be like, no, you can't do that. And they would squash that. But check this out. A race war just has been, this has been predicted years ago. I'm not the one to start predicting this. A race war or a war against police where all sorts of police are dying randomly or all sorts of black people start coming up dead. Well, guess what that's going to do? That's going to put the election on the back burner. And your so-called fraudulent illusion of an election, that's going to be put on the back burner. There's going to be a state of emergency called. Obama's going to come up on the TV and he's going to say, you know what? I know people have been predicting this for years, but all those people are conspiracy theorists. Now we got a real problem on our hands and we got to deal with it. We got to deal with it right now. There's no time for an election. I'm going to have to do a third term. And everybody who's, who's saying that they've been predicting this for for years, they're all haters. Uh, they want to bring down the country, and now they're criminals. They're looking to bring down the country in a very criminal way. We need to start locking them up. And not only that, I need to serve a third term just to, to make sure this country is safe. That's how it's going down. That's how um, he's going to serve a third term. No, he is not running. Stop being naive. This is July the 23rd, 2015.